A man got a nail stuck in his head, but all he felt was just a little itch. Didn't he have a brain? The doctor could only bring health equipment to take some images. In the end, it was good news. The nail just grazed his skull. All it took was a little tug. And now he came. There was bad news. When it came time to pay the bill, it came out to $250. The man's brother felt this was a highway robbery and was on the verge of cursing. Unbeknownst to him, our main character Sean was watching him. Sure enough, in the next second, the man suddenly felt a sharp pain in his chest, and the blood pressure on the monitor started to drop drastically. Sean examined him and found that the man also had a nail in his tailbone, and it had been in there for a while. It was completely embedded in the flesh. They were going to have to operate to get it out. In the operating room, although the nail was quickly removed, they found it had pierced one of the kidneys, and the wound was huge. There was no way to sew it up. They had to remove it. People have two kidneys anyway. As long as they had one, they could survive. But then Sean noticed that man's other kidney was nowhere to be found. Did he sell it to buy apples? No matter why the other kidney was missing, the man's remaining kidney couldn't be removed. The only way to save his life was to find a transplant. But time was running out. Where could they find a matching kidney? The best option was to get a transplant from the man's brother. So Sean told the bald guy in front of him all about the transplant risks, including but not limited to hemorrhaging, infection, and even the lifelong after effects. Having said all that, he asked if he would sign the transplant agreement or not, but the bald brother felt that it was worthless to sign it for nothing. He wanted a little favor in return. It was very simple. He would ask his brother to sell the company and give all the money to him. This was no small favor. This is asking for his brother's life itself. It turned out that the company was part of an inheritance from their late father. The brother had been coveting it for a long time, and now he finally had a chance. But the patient said he wasn't going to give him anything. So the negotiation broke down, but no matter how stubborn the man was, his kidney wouldn't last long. That's why Sean, who was very direct, suggested that he sell the company. It was better than losing his life. After all, suddenly, oh, he felt a pain in his arm. Sean went to check it out, and blood spurted everywhere. Apparently, the man's condition had worsened. It was imperative that they find him a matching kidney. Even Sean, who was autistic, had to try to make it work himself, go immediate between the brothers. From the bald brother, Sean learned another important truth. It turned out that the father of the two brothers had always treated his older brother as a tool, but through the filter of his childhood, he saw it as encouragement from his father. But the bald brother saw right through it. That's why he wanted his brother to get away from the company. You know what he told me on his deathbed? He said that he wasn't proud of Santi for following in his footsteps, but he was disappointed that he settled. You should tell your brother that. Sean's thoughts were always straightforward. But there are things you just don't say. What do you mean? That's just a bunch of drama. Why bother? The bald brother realized something thanks to Sean's words. He told his brother what he really thought. The company's situation was deteriorating. Sooner or later, it would bring him down. Why not get out of it while they still could? Then they could look for another. But the younger brother's words obviously couldn't change everything on the spot. Still, after saying what's on his mind, the bald brother signed the transplant agreement without hesitation. There was no such thing as a feud between the brothers. In the end, the transplant went smoothly. The bald brother, who had risked his life, was pushed into his brother's hospital room by Sean. When the elder brother found out, it was his brother who saved him. He still said a heartfelt thank you. You're welcome. Just don't come looking for another one without a big check in your hand. Jerk. When the doctor wasn't looking, this patient took the opportunity to bite him. Sean was so scared that he leapt away and he almost called for help catching the brute. Obviously, this white and beautiful woman didn't realize that she was in big trouble. It turns out that just this morning, the woman and her husband had had a car accident. The husband suffered a dislocation, but Sean was able to fix it with a simple movement. The woman wasn't so lucky, though. Doctors found that she was bleeding profusely in her abdomen. She needed to be taken in for surgery immediately. But when they cut open the belly, they were surprised to find that the woman was pregnant. Two months along, she had had a miscarriage in a car accident. That's why the situation was so serious. So Sean went to the woman's husband and told him about the tragic death of the baby. But the man wasn't sad instead he was confused. What baby? It turned out he's been sterilized 10 years ago. Even if he wanted kids, he couldn't have them. What other way is there to say it except that the woman had clearly been having some fun on the side. The man still insisted that he trusted his wife. He confronted her about it and the wife swore that she was a good person. There's no way she'd betray him. But then, a moment later, Sean was giving her a routine checkup and this woman put her face on him. Sean was dumbfounded. He was so scared that he fled from the hospital room. Soon after, her husband heard about it and came to the woman's hospital bed in a rage. Asking the woman if she was a loose woman, the woman tried to defend herself. But before the man came, 
He had checked the family account and found that the money in the account had disappeared. He could only assume that the woman was keeping a young man outside. The woman then realized that she had been exposed. Afterward, she stammered, saying she really couldn't control it. The man doesn't want to listen to her nonsense. Though, disappointed, he left. Just then, though, Sean suddenly realized that the woman's right hand popped up uncontrollably. He followed the arm up all the way to the woman's brain and happily came to the conclusion that she had a brain tumor and it was pressing on the central nervous system, causing the woman to act strangely and uncontrollably. But then, something strange happened. Sean gave the woman an MRI which showed that her brain was normal. Was Sean wrong? Was the woman's behavior actually intentional? It would leave Sean in shock for a whole year. The world is sad and very complicated. Sean told the woman the results, and the woman finally confessed, maybe, just maybe, she had something going on with one of her clients. Sean could only turn away in silence, but then his colleague Claire noticed something. She handed the woman a tablet and asked her to try and draw a clock. The result was surprising, though, because there was only one side of the clock, so there was something wrong with the woman's mind after all. After further examination, they found she did have a tumor, but it was in her chest. The tumor's protein could enter the brain through blood vessels and affect the woman's right parietal cortex, causing the woman to act on bold ideas. She had no inhibitions or control. As for where the family's savings went, the woman said she gave it all to charity. It's her fault for not wanting to see others suffer. So when she saw a donation, she would feel the urge to donate. That's all. The man was almost ready to forgive her. But he still had a question. How many times did the woman cheat on him? The woman's counted in her head for a while. Four. Five times. The man couldn't figure out where the five came from, so he gritted his teeth and left the room. Soon after, Sean removed the woman's tumor and she was finally able to suppress her impulses. When she saw attractive people, she wasn't forced to act on any base desires. She was healthy, and to everyone's surprise, the woman's husband returned to the ward. Although betrayed by the woman so many times, he finally chose to forgive her. After all, it's all because of the disease. In short, the man was happy, so all was well. This boy had been abused by his father since he was three years old. A deep concave mark was left on his forehead. He'd been hurt before, though, so he'd get over it. But this time, he was going to see Sean, and that never ends well. After examination, it was found that the boy had a fractured brow and a severe lung contusion. After the anesthesia, Sean needed to make a small incision in the boy's chest, and then he would intubate him for pulmonary recanalization, after which he would get an MRI. Later, Dr. Park will operate on him to repair the fracture. And if he could, fill in the hole in his head. But as soon as he said that, Sean balked at the suggestion. Because the forehead mark been there for a long time. Not only was it difficult to fix, it wasn't something life-threatening. So there was no need to waste medical resources. Sean's had never had a high EQ. He destroyed the boy's hope with a few words. During the MRI, Park wondered if Sean didn't have any sympathy for the boy. Sean simply responded with his usual brutal honesty. You're talking to our patient because you like him, which is causing him to move, which is affecting our imagery. When Sean looked at the film, though, he realized that the boy had actually become very sick. His stomach had passed through a gap in his diaphragm up into the chest cavity. He had to be operated on right away. In the middle of the operation, Park was still trying to fill the boy's hole. But in a rare moment, Liam, who was usually a compassionate towards his patients, agreed with Sean. It's expensive, risky, and unnecessary. But empathy can be an invaluable motivator, Dr. Murphy, that truly connects the physician with their patient. But then he looked up. It turned out that the new director had come to visit. That was the actual reason why he said such nice things. After repairing the diaphragm, the next step is to repair the boy's brow bone. The doctor first inserted a high-density polyethylene mesh, which would allow for the growth of fibrous blood vessels and bond with the patient's tissue. Halfway through, Sean suddenly had a bold idea. They could put a breast implant in the pit of the boy's head. Everyone wondered why Sean suddenly changed his mind. To which Sean said, Nowadays, the cost and risk are very low. It's just a matter of putting silicone in the hole. There was no additional surgery required. It was a great way to do it. But right after they put the silicone in the boy's forehead, his heart rate began to change dramatically. Turns out it was the implant compression that caused the congestion behind his eyeballs. The boy's heartbeat went to zero before the alarm even went off. Luckily, there were experienced doctors around who tried to bring the boy back to life. Luckily for the boy, not only was he saved, but the hole was filled. The boy expressed his gratitude to Sean, but Sean thought about it and admitted his mistake and told the truth about how the boy was almost killed. It was a mistake. Sean left the hospital room, followed by Park. He realizes that it's not that Sean doesn't care about his patients. It's just that he's always on the rational side of things. 
he pulls out a packet of painkillers that the hospital prescribed for the boy. But the boy didn't take a single one. It's an addictive drug, and I'm sure that's what both the boy and the person who beat him up in the hospital were after. In a nutshell, Sean's surgery fills not only the hole in his head, but the hole in the boy's future. 